How okay. are you? Sulem na na ron! Woo! Oh my God, can I say how much I love, love, love Gabby so much. What you bring to this character is like equal parts, sweetness and vulnerability, but also badass, don't mess with me or my loved ones. For real. <laughs> Oh, thank you so much. That means so much to me, especially coming from you. Honestly, oh, you're so you are such a huge fan of Mayan since day one. You've been our ride or die, like literally. And I, I come in from Suns. Just yeah. why I, I came in for. I was a Suns fan, and when I heard that there was going to be one about, you know, us for That's us for Latinos, I was like, this is a dream come true, and you, none of you guys have let me down. So thank you. Thank you. Oh, I'm so okay, happy. it's about time we have some girl power on here because I've been talking a lot with all the guys. <laughs> um, for anybody just joining us, we're talking about Mayans MC, one of yeah. my favorite shows and one of the best shows on TV right now and ever. Even when you guys are on break, you're one of the best shows. How about that? Yo, respect. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Sulem, tell me a little bit about you and how you got the role of Gabby. Oh my gosh. So about me, so I'm pretty much born and raised in down. I was born in Downey, raised in Paramount. And, um, you know, I always had this huge dream in becoming an actress. And especially, you know, what really got me there was Selena. 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 Yes, the performance and everything. I was like, oh, I just want to be, I just want to be in this performance. And I used to like dance in front of everybody. But that's just like a, another story. Mm -hmm. But, um, Talking about Mayans, LJ, you know, so pretty much he saw me have he saw me in the on, on my film Nona, and it's talking about humans trafficking and mm -hmm. Kate Bosworth is the producer in it and um, Kate Bosworth worked with Elgin before in another different film, and he went to go see me in, in the premiere and I didn't know he was behind me the whole time, <gasps> and yes he. Didn't he just told me this probably like a week ago, and um, but it's better, or you would have been nervous. I, I was actually, I, I told him, I was like, why didn't you say hi to me? <laughs> <laughs> but he said that he got so impacted by my character of Nona, and he said that he couldn't sleep for like weeks because he was like, what happened to Nona? You know, it's a very if you haven't seen it, watch it. It's amazing. Uh, you know, especially what's happening right now. Mm -hmm. with, trafficking it's like setting a shed light to to those to the people that they need um but with that being said he got so impacted by it that he was like how am I gonna get this girl in in my season in season two and we had a three-hour lunch conversation and within those three hours we literally only talk about minds for 10 minutes because we're just so amazed with each other. Like, you're such a human being. I was like, you too. And we were just going in and talking and talking. It was beautiful. Um, but yeah, and then ever since then, like, you know, I went, he, he had me audition for a different character. It didn't work out. We were both bummed. But I was like, you know, whatever God wants. Wait, which character? Which character? It was, it, well, her name was Faith. But I think they changed it to Hope. I'm not sure. Oh, well, Hope is on. Yeah. No, but no, but Hope came in since Sons. Yes, but they had me as a girl named Faith. Oh, okay. And and it, but it didn't it didn't work out. But we were like, it's fine, it's okay. Like you know, whatever God wants me to be in, I'll be in. Amen. And, and then Gabriela came into the picture. And he's like, I really want to audition for this. I was like, okay. I literally got it. Like, I auditioned. He gave me that audition, probably in the middle of the evening, and it was due by in a couple hours, and I just did it send it over and from in that moment that night he eldrin was like you're in i was like wow i'm in with the latino gang which is so amazing you know and everyone is so absolutely so nice so warm-hearted open open arms for me since season two it, it's just i'm blessed to just even be in a latino in the latino show it's awesome yeah. And this, this cast is just one of the best. They're so easygoing and welcoming. So I can't even imagine what it's like for you that you actually work on this show. They're big teddy bears. Big teddy oh. And, you know, coming in with, like, so much men in the show, you know, it's a little intimidating. I'm not going to lie. 
but it you know walking in they're just such big teddy bears like gilly he's like hi how are you I was like, <laughs> so big so i was like oh hi <laughs> you know um but yeah everyone's amazing now i want to make clear because yeah. i feel like everybody likes to talk about gabby uh like that's, uh, you know, easy. Everybody's uh, internet, the internet's boyfriend is easy. And Gabby is like the love interest. But I think that Gabby is so much more beyond that. Like she's a woman in her own right. She's, she's not phased by the little things when, oh my God, in this episode when Emily shows up and is like panicked and hugging her and then Gabby just comes to the, to the, the door and it's just like, you don't even have to say anything. Yeah. So. I, it's just every time I see her, I'm just like, I want to know more about her. Like outside of, yes, she's, she's uh, Easy's beautiful girlfriend, but I want to know so much more about Gabby. Oh, thank you. Okay, so Gabby, her, so, you know, she really went through a lot. Gabby went, Gabriela went through a lot, especially, you know, living in Oaxaca. She was born and raised in Oaxaca. And when she came to the U.S., like, she didn't want to live in that darkness anymore. Like, she was tired of it you know, and, and, and it's actually happening right now in this moment. And I feel like it's just a beautiful light to shed, you know, and, but with, with Gabriela, especially, I feel like, you know, she's been through so much, probably with her relationship before, probably it, it happened the same thing what happened with, with easy and she's going through it again. And she's like, I did. I wanted to come here to to live my life and in a most positive, light way, and just work hard. You know, become, go to school, do something with myself, and make mm -hmm. them out, help them out. You know, and then when you know Letty introduces mm -hmm. Gabby to 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 Easy, you can see that Gabby sees light in him immediately. And you know, as Latinas, we want to change the man and like, you know what I mean? So I think she's so nurtured and so grounded and she knows what she wants and she's been there before. She doesn't want to go through that again, you know? And that's why, and I, that's why in the, in the church scene, you know, I feel, oh. I feel like they got, for Gabby, I think that it was like a moment of her, like, we kind of got married, like, you know? Oh. I hadn't even thought of that. Yeah, like, you know, I felt that, like, walking down the aisle, you know, we, because he's, he's being open with me and telling mm -hmm. me the story about, you know, about St. Francis and St. Clair. And um, that story it was beautiful. But for Gabby on the inside, she's just like, I've been to this route before about love and everything. And she's like, she's scared, but she's also open to, fall in love with she's not afraid to fall in love again but then when he got shot you know she got traumatized going back from it and then you know she just she's starting to fall in love with him we could see it and 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 you can see it in her eyes she doesn't have you have to say anything you know and i think that was the beautiful thing about working with jd is you know we were so passionate we just wanted to do the most, the most like just profound in the moment, you know, just being in the moment when we were on on set. And I think that was so beautiful working with JD. And he's mm -hmm. just so awesome, made me feel so comfortable, especially Elgin. Um, it was just beautiful. Yeah. I spoke to JD this week about the episode, which by the way, I, will, I can't say enough. Uh, episode 306 is probably one of the most beautiful episodes of television I've seen in my life. It looked like a movie. That's right. It looks like a movie. That so, was, oh, sorry. That's, that was the goal. Yeah. So, it, and, and, and we agreed that from the moment after you guys leave the hospital, from there until the moment that he gets that text message at the end saying we're going to war that you guys were living in a fantasy this was a fantasy that played out for us and for you guys talk to me about that oof um in in, in which way you want me and say repeat that again yeah so um you guys were kind of living in this bubble that was like a fantasy Be when bishop says you guys can go out of town Everything that happens from there until just shortly before the text, 
it was like a fantasy. You guys were like in this snow globe of something in your own little world. Talk to me about that. Okay, so, um, you know, living in, in that moment with him, escaping with him was for Gabby, it was just kind of saying like, we're actually going to get to know each other and get really like deep into the roots between me and, 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 and um, easy. And in, in those moments, you know, I feel like even though I was in the fantasy bubble, I felt him that this wasn't right. Why did you get shot? Tell, like, tell me, I want to know, you know, and, and, and even though Gabby knows she's in a fantasy, in a fantasy, she knows it. I mean, she's a woman, like, you know, she wants mm -hmm. to fall in love again. So just, you know, just when she opened herself up in the ocean, she pretty much got baptized and she healed herself from all the trauma that she had in episode six. And which I think that was like one of my favorite parts, by the way, in the ocean. It's beautiful. So beautiful. I feel like she literally got baptized and like the hemp, um, easy and Gabby having that connection of laughing experience and just like having a moment of just like love. It was just so beautiful. But knowing for, I mean, obviously I cannot say anything for episode seven, which is going to be super juicy, but. Um, I've seen it. Ju juicy is not the w the word that I would use, but I'm not gonna pick a word because I don't want to get in trouble either. No, I don't want I don't want to get in trouble. But just know that JD and I, uh, not I'm sorry, Easy, <laughs> Easy and Gabby were were falling in love and and in the most beautiful way. And I think Easy knows that too. But now he just remember when he looked at me when he looked at Gabby, just like in the like kind of saying like man, we're going to, I'm going to war. And he's like, look, looking at Gabby, like, that's reality. Yes. And, and I think you're going to see something that probably might be very impacted for the fans for an episode seven in the most like beautiful way. Um, you know, I can't tell more, but just know that we're in love and we're finding each other and let's see where the waves go from there oh i like that you brought in the waves i love i like that because we're talking about the ocean um <laughs> back with those waves girl okay <laughs> um so from my conversation again we don't want to give too much and i'm not here to trap anybody but <laughs> uh, in, in my conversation with jd uh we were discussing how he's at a crossroads right now where he's trying to follow this fantasy on one side and he 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 like you know, owes everything here to his club. And he's kind of at a crossroad and he's going to have to kind of make a decision. Mm -hmm. And I want to, and I truly want to believe that his decision or his choice is somewhere in the middle where we can make everything work. I mean, Easy is like so smart and talented and all these things. I'm hoping that there's a space, somebody here in between. Tell me, is there a space in between where they could still be together? I want them together. I mean... E yes you know we're still how can i say this you know when you fall in love with somebody right and especially especially with easy and gabby they're falling in love but you don't know what's gonna happen things can go into what about he's trying to fight for me or you know or he still has to like lie to me just so he can keep me there because he's still confused can i change or not so I think that's going to be the really the good part between Easy and Gabby. It's that like, oh, is she going to is 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 Easy going to pick Gabby? Yes or no? You know, it's just, you know, because he's still he has his brother there. You know, he has mm -hmm. Angel and also he has to protect his father. So he's like right in the middle, you know. And well, I I feel like in the end and you 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 don't have to confirm or deny. I feel that in the end Gabby's going to pick herself. And if he wants to come along for the ride, see, I got my little pun in there too. Ooh. If he wants to come along for the ride, then good. And if not, like, she's got a lot, a lot to offer, right? Yeah, absolutely she does. And time will tell. Like I said, time will tell with the waves. And I think that part where Gabby got baptized, there's a, there's a moment in the ocean that she got fully connected with herself, as in, like, finding herself. You know how uh, Adelita found herself by shaving her head? Mm -hmm. Still with Gabby, she found herself in the ocean again. 
And and now even, you know, when she wakes up from the beach and whatever happens on episode seven, she's going to have a realization as well that, you know, she is in love, but also she's here to change her life as well. Mm-hmm. But it's up to Easy and Gabby. Can they work that out? And that's I mean, he only has one fork. He has two now. <laughs> yeah, now, but I mean, when you, when Gabby sees, I mean, it's like, you only have one fork. I asked, I, I, I asked JD too. I said, what JD, you- do you have more forks than, uh, than Easy does? He goes, oh, don't worry. In my house, he goes, not only do I have many forks, I have a whole drawer of the forks I get from a boyo, a boyo local. What are the utensils? Yeah. <laughs> I, I believe him. <laughs> okay, everybody in the comments wants wants to know what it's like working with a giant like Edward James almost. He's been so gruñ- gruñudo, is that the word? Gruñón? Gruñón, gruñón. I- I'm Cuban, so my words are different. Um, no, gruñón. Your, your huh? word. What's your word in Cuba? Amargao. We will say amar- ese está amargao. Almargado. Okay, está amargado. <laughs> what, 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 uh, what country are you from? Your family? Hello. Hello. Ah, no wonder. I saw a bunch of Salvi flags Gruñon. there. Uh-huh. <laughs> bueno, Gruñon. Uh, he, and, and, you, and Gabby brought him out of that. Talk to me about working with him. Beautiful. It's like, a, I'm like working, in, I'm working and taking deep acting classes with him at the same time. He is an absolutely best person. I love him so much, and he has helped me. Uh, he he inspires me. Um, mm-hmm. You know, watching him as like a little kid, I always wanted to work with him. That's a dream of mine. And then the fact that I can finally work with him, you know, it's just a dream come true. And he made me feel so warm. And he told me, he's like, yo, um, he was like, Sulem, we're going to make this happen. We're going to create some magic. Okay, we're gonna create waves. And when he said waves, I'm like, does he know that Gabby is about to get baptized? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Edward James almost knows everything. I know he does. Um, it was just beautiful to work with him. It was such a dream come true. And there was like a, a beautiful, I shared a beautiful moment with him together on set. We had a great take. Um, and the two of us, we knew at the same time, uh, it was a great, beautiful scene that we just looked at each other. We nodded like this, and we went like t- two fist bumps at and the same time. As we felt it, and uh, that what scene was that. Um, I can't say. Oh, okay. It hasn't <laughs> happened. It hasn't happened yet. I thought. Yeah. No. 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 <laughs> wait. Wait. Is it a wedding scene? No, 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 no. Okay, okay, okay. I won't, I won't press you. No, that it maybe was, because, you know, one of my favorite ones, one of my favorite scenes is when he doesn't want to eat anything, and then, and Gabby's like, whatever. Like, he's, he's not as, even as bad as my uncle, something like that. And then you, she makes mole. Uh, oh, and then you spark well, this it, conversation I, about tamales. You, you spark it, because somebody told me, they're like, who on earth makes tamales with leaves? I'm like, uh, we do. I'm like, we're Caribbean, and we make it with, uh, we make it with the, you know, the plantain. Uh-huh, with the banana leaves. Honestly, they taste so much better, personally. Not because I'm Salvadorian. It's just <laughs> different texture. But, I mean, everyone has their 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 taste. But I like the banana leaves. And they do keep them moist. And it's actually more delicious. That's what I think. But, um, but yeah. <laughs> do you actually know how to make them? I don't, but I know how to make some really good pupusas. I've mm-hmm. never had some. So when this <laughs> pandemic is over, I, w- I need some Sulem pupusas i've never even seen them no okay i need i need to send you a, a picture that my mom i recently just ate pupusas at my mom's house and they were like this is nothing better than your mom's food <laughs> oh, but i i actually okay so i wanted to make this really fun because i know i've been okay. all your interviews oh um, you have yes and okay, go. I, want to ask you a question oh my god you're the first person to flip it on me <laughs> okay sorry I'll, it won't be nothing bad uh so what is your favorite favorite scene from season three gosh that's really really okay. hard i mean of gabby's or oh of, anybody 
I can't pick a scene. I have to pick episode 306. The whole episode is so beautiful. Don't make me pick. I picked the whole episode 306. Okay, that's good. That's good. Oh, and who's your favorite character? That's okay. another tough one. You can pick somebody because else. For, because, well, for me, it, it evolves all the time because all of you just bring something so special to each character that I really feel that, I really feel from this cast that it's like, it, you guys are so in sync that it's all like one cohesive story together. So I love you all. I really do. Um, I, but I, I see a lot of myself if I was like 20 years younger in Gabby, for sure. And I just see, you know, this beautiful brown woman, like, you know, she's, she's representing and this beautiful brown love story. And I'm just like, oh, I love this so much. So, so I'm really happy that um, Latinos are coming together and we're creating stories that actually really do happen. Not just like behind the scenes, we're going literally behind the scenes and what Latinos really, like what really does happen. Like, you know, Gabby mm -hmm. coming from a dangerous like country, not saying the whole country is dangerous, but just some parts where you live can be a little dangerous to live and you want to get away from that. And for Gabby to just like, you know, make a huge step and not staying and being comfortable she wants to be uncomfortable so she can learn more and get out and like make her dreams come true and what she really wants i think that's very beautiful and you get to see the love of you know gabby and easy falling in love and you get to see them coming getting closer and closer and closer and you're like oh where's episode seven <laughs> listen i'm not in a rush to get there that's all i'll say about that <laughs> um but i from one of from from three oh six, sorry. Um, there are just so many Gabby moments that I love. Um, you, the moment where she where she pops the squat to take a pee made me laugh because I'm like, my mom is Peruvian, and I'm like, I'm like that's something that I totally would do me too, <laughs> and have done like after like a night of partying. I'm from Miami. I'm like, oh, that's something that I've done. And the fact that you know she seems to be kind of so reserved, and then that moment she's just like, I'm just gonna pee here. I, I have to. I don't gotta pee. And I was also like, you can tell like Gabby, she was just, you know, very like, okay, he's not looking. And then as soon as he looks, you can see, you can barely see it, but you're like, oh, hello, turn around. <laughs> but she also gave this big smile, like, well, I guess I'm kind of at that comfort level with you. Exactly. <laughs> I see someone is asking that they want to know more about Gabby's uncle. Is he part of a club? Uh, no, he's not a part of the club. He's also, you know, he went through a lot as well. And we, you know, um, I can't we just went through a lot and just and just know that we got as a family we got closer so okay. my uncle, dad i see him as like my father mm -hmm. i guess we could say we could say about next episode is that we see a little bit more about gabby's family we yeah. say, that's not too much of a spoiler um but yeah so we'll, we'll see a little bit about that um, and then another Gabby moment that I love too was, you know, well, first, obviously the Emily part was like epic because I have hated Emily for a while because. Oh my God. Huh? I said, oh my God. I said, <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't hear you. I said, oh my God. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Now I can. I, I, and I don't mean like the actress at all. I love Sarah Bolger. She's amazing. Um, I, but this character, like she had the chance to be with easy and then she ended up with miguel so like you have no right to be mad and i feel like she knew that in that moment it was like oh my god i'm so sorry and she goes to run off but gabby's unfazed but then when he tries to bring it up again and she's like easy i only care about two things who shot you and why right exactly and i'm like yes you badass b you're unfazed completely by this person you know you're his queen exactly and in that moment you know just as gabby she was just like i get it i understand i've been there before i i know who i am i am strong i know i i am beautiful inside and out i know i've been through a lot and if you want to be with me you're going to be with me you know and it was one of those and i understand you know easy he was just trying to of course because he wants to respect me and I get it and I felt that from him when I was like putting the bandage I felt that he was telling me like he was just trying to respect me because you know we didn't talk about it in the whole ride just going 
to church to the to the church to the to you know to the chapel so him trying to say that to me i i said look i don't care about her i just care about you i'm gonna be it's kind of like telling him like i'm your ride or die but you have to let me know what's going on because then how am i gonna help you you know that's what i was gonna say it, it, but there's also this moment where i feel like she should have let him tell her a little bit because she says let me like like I, you wanted to know more about him you wanted him to let you to let you in but then when he tries to but i also understand because it was just like look i have no worries about this person mm -hmm. so i don't need to know but at the same time it was cool that he was he was do, he was That's trying he was respecting he was respecting our relationship and that was really nice of him you know and that's why you know i didn't scream at him <laughs> <laughs> but, you know but, see, but you see lo regañaste in the hospital that that's the other part oh huh? the part is like yes i love that part cuz we're looking at this badass biker guy who just got shot and who's going to war but you're like regañándolo and that made me that made me but, laugh so hard Well, see, and the Salvadorian came out in a way and said <laughs> because the way he okay, so that scene it's fun to talk about. So I remember mm -hmm. that day like if it was yesterday. So um me saying yes a kid was not in the um in the script. It just happened just normally in how I would say it because the way, you know, Easy talks to the talks to the to, to the male nurse, it's just like that's rude and I was not expecting him to even like to because you know You know, you just go come and set, you do your job and you put in the, your A game on, you know? So just have fun with it. And that was mm -hmm. a beautiful thing working with minds. But <laughs> when I lo regañé, it was funny because right when they said cut, you can hear Elgin, Debbie, Brett, everyone from the production just cracking up so hard. Debbie was like, "We're we we're, we're, we're taking that one in. That that's that that's the shot. That's the scene." Because it was just so like natural mm -hmm. and the way you talk to the male nurse it's just mm -hmm. like don't be rude you know <laughs> and i loved it because it it showed it showed on one level your comfort uh within the cast as an actor but also the girl like i said with the peeing scene her growing comfort just being in easy's world yeah exactly exactly and it's just showing him little by little and who i really am you know i'm not just this saint like how i told them on mm -hmm. I'm not a saint, you know. You can talk to me easy. You can cuss in front of me easy. <laughs> Now, um, what what I love about this world, and yes, I love the guys so much, but I love the women so much because it's got to be so tough to be these, to be a woman in this heavily male dominated world. But you guys hold it down hardcore. Um and 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 by the way to stay on the topic of girl power Emily Tosca is going to be on the gram with me next week we're going to keep going with the girl power <laughs> yes the girl talk will have Emily on here um hopefully you guys have more scenes this season what can you say about that um i don't know maybe maybe stay tuned that's what all the guys tell me yes just stay tuned <laughs> And I know that you and Carla, Carla Barada are very close. Tell me about your relationship with Carlita. She's so good, man. So like she's so sweet. Uh we recently uh Emily and Carlita, we went for dinner and just had a girls night and we were just talking about our stories and how we got into Mayans and it was so funny. We were all like, "Oh, my story is not that great, but uh just just I'll let you I'll tell you and I'll tell them the story and then Carlita said the same thing oh mine is not going to top yours and then they tell the story it's like that was a great story what are you talking about and then it was just so funny just like to have that connection with them it was so beautiful she's so sweet and she's so powerful not only she's powerful in the show she's really she's grounded I love that girl like you, you she doesn't even have to do anything she's just she's just Carlita You know, she's just so sweet. And the same thing with Emily. You know, we're just so confident and like we know what we want. We're proud to be Latinas and we're just proud to be in a mind show that is like putting, you know, the light for Latinos and what we actually go through. And I think that is just so beautiful. And to show the strong side of Latinas is so beautiful to see on this season. 
And like, good job, Elgin. Good job, Debbie. You guys are killing it. And the other, other rest of the writers are killing it. And like, showing the, the side of like womanhood, like how we are so powerful in our own way. And sometimes like how you were saying, how like, you know, Gabby doesn't even have to say anything. Tarita didn't have to say anything when she shaved her head. And it's just like those those are the beautiful, powerful moments of, of Mayan season of, of women empowerment. And not only for women, men are being powerful too, being vulnerable. Like, see them cry and just being in there. Like Bishop. I, I've Bishop. been so surprised by Bishop, right? Episode six, he he's one of my favorite characters. Shout Thank out to, Bishop, to Michael Orby. Like, he's <laughs> killing it. Those scenes were, I was like, he's one of my favorite characters now. He's amazing. He's killing it. Um, but yeah, uh, we're talking about the men, you know, the men. You know, I was talking to Elgin about it, that it's just so beautiful to see men are being so vulnerable and crying. And, you know, I feel like when men be, become vulnerable, they, they show grace and grace is power, you know. So you get not I only, love that. you know, a woman being powerful, but you get to see men being powerful, too, and being vulnerable. You know, and that's beautiful because sometimes we never really get to see that. And I was talking to Richard on live about it, how, you know, uh, we were we went deep into like the Latino stories and how like, you know, people see us in, in a different way, you know, and how Latinos should be. Or they say, oh, Latinos, uh, men, men shouldn't cry. If you if you cry, you're not powerful, you know, and that's not true. You know, m we men can cry, too. They have mm -hmm. to let out their emotions in order to heal. How are they going to heal? You know, even even I don't want to stray too far from Richard because yeah. e even even Richard uh, in this season where he's completely spiraling as Coco and he's lost. I mean, he doesn't have his mom. He's you know he's staying up, uh, away from his daughter, I guess, to kind of protect her too. But then he finds this vulnerable space with Hope, who's going through something so similar. Let's talk about that. That scene, it's like they were both hiding something, even though they were asking questions and the answers were not brought in. That's how it seemed like. I'm and laughing. So I'm laughing. Sorry, because I keep remembering that scene where like he kind of catches himself kind of, you know, falling into like that sharing and he's like, huh? The astrology? No, no, but that too. I actually like to know those astrological signs of the characters I like, but when he goes, you ask too many questions. And yeah. I just... Right? Yeah, that was beautiful. Also, he said the same thing kind of with JD, uh, with Easy when they were in the truck. And he was trying to open up and tell him about, like, you know, I'm in two different worlds. And he goes, shut the... Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, after the bridge over River Kwai. Yeah, exactly. Did you get to see that shot? That was so incredible to see. Oh, the yeah. The bridge over River Kwai. That was, I know for the boys, you know, it was fun to work. They, 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 were, they were having fun. Knowing them, they had fun doing that scene. Boys and their toys, right? I know. They're, they're hilarious. When they're together, they're like brothers. They put on a show. They're funny when they come together. But yeah. I also like to hear that all you girls kind of have the same relationship too, where it's it's a sisterhood. It is, and that's so fine to have, like for for um you know just to find that in the industry, and especially because this is my first my first season being a series regular, mm -hmm. coming in a big show. Uh, in the beginning, it was just like, am I gonna get along with the girls? You know, you know, you have these questions, and then immediately when you just meet them for the first time, it's love immediately immediately not even joking we're like oh my god hi like we talk like we've never seen each like we we haven't seen each other in a very long time even though that was our first time meeting each other that was the best that was like the best feeling ever was it was it i mean we we see that uh uh obviously gabby and easy take their relationship to the next level in this episode was that difficult to shoot during because you guys were shooting during the pandemic Oh, yeah, we were. Uh, but we were all so professional. And I think from when Elgin, when we had that huge meeting before even starting the season, we really uh, got all of us in the cast members production, we got so connected. And and how, how, how bad do we want this? You're either on the train or the train is going to leave you. And it, it was like that. It's like, we have to put our A game on. Mm -hmm. we, 
know, we're on COVID season, even though, you know, we do get checked um, three times a week, you know, we still need to be careful and be mindful in what we're doing, you know, and take this really seriously. And mm -hmm. thank God it didn't, we didn't stop. We were still working. And that's when you knew that when, when the months were going like day by day and when we knew we were still together and like we, the, the show never got canceled, you can tell that we had this more respect of each other as family. And mm -hmm. that's when, things were going real with us like just like coming together collaborating together as a family and it mm -hmm. that was beautiful man even with ugh, God, I don't want to cry it was really awesome oh that's so beautiful yeah now you're gonna make me cry because honestly like, and, and oh you're so cute I mean I can truly and genuinely say that you guys are I mean a lot of cast say you know uh, oh yeah we're like family and then but we're they're really, really not but I can say honestly, from all the time that I spend with you guys, uh, you know, throughout the years, you guys really act like a family. You, get, you guys are a family. It was, it, it's so beautiful to work with like all Latinos. Yeah, sorry. It's okay, please. But like, it was just so beautiful just to even like work with them, man. And like with JD, you know, he was just so, he's so talented and such a great person in general. And he and LJ made me feel so comfortable. And Edward James made me feel so comfortable, especially with such an, like, an intimate relationship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. partner. And I was so blessed to even work with him. And I learned so much about him, especially because like, I see him as like the leader of the wolf pack, you know? Yeah. And, and he, he made that happen, man. He, he was there from the beginning of the jump. And like, you can tell, like, he was just such a warrior for himself. Like he went through a lot. I remember working with him for like a, it was like a five day in the row, Monday through Friday. And he had like all like the, these big scenes of like, you know, fighting scenes and stuff like that. And, and you can tell like he was going through it, but he still like pushed forward and, and he just put the bandage through some Advil and he goes, let's go. And I was like, yes, you know, and just seeing that was just so powerful just to even like have a partner that mm -hmm. is ride or die, not just, you know, in, in just the characters, but in person too, just like being professional, but also like uh, taking it to the next level of season, of season three. And that was. Well, I I'm sure that everybody knows this, but there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, Elgin's of Elgin's life that is, in Easy's story, his real Elgin's real story. Yes, it is. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's about. Uh, I don't know. Can we talk about that? <laughs> uh, we don't have to get deep into it because I'm not sure what you'll say. But I don't want you to get in trouble. I'm here for you to succeed. But, um, but you know that that's something that JD has mentioned to me before about how they have such a great relationship and are able to speak okay. to each other. Be yeah, because there's so much of Elgin and his story. And I also know that for the Coco character, that him and Richard really have like a bond on a bunch of different levels that also mixes it into the character of Coco. Oh yeah, you can tell. Like, um, I didn't, I didn't see like the relationship between um Elgin and and Coco. I mean, Elgin and Richard, but I did see the relationship that JD and Elgin had. And you know, you can just tell they're just like brothers. You know, like if uh, you know, if JD has a question, like you can tell they go in their corner and they talk about it. And and I think that's one beautiful thing working with Elgin is that um. You get to play and you get to fall down, fall down and get up, and and do it again. And no one's laughing; they're just there to like get you up and like let's do this again. And I think that was like really beautiful to like work with Elgin, you know. Yeah, I so with the with with Richard, it's more so that they have a lot of similarity parallels in their own lives as far as like having been part of the gang life and like, you know, the jail and all this kind of stuff. It's it's not a secret. This is all stuff that they have spoken about publicly. Yeah. And so it's 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 things that they shared uh, commonalities uh, from their lives that they kind of like goes into the Coco character. He says that especially this season with a lot of the characters, it's been more about the connection of the actors and the characters, which I thought was really fascinating. Yeah, and um, you know, Elgin really wanted the season to be character driven, so mm -hmm. we were deep into these characters and the dark sides and the complicated nature of being human and I'm just so thankful that these stories of Latinos are being told in such a 
uh, a beautiful, complex way and showing all sides of a person. You know, like just really getting into the complexity of it, the death and, and, and getting really like deep into the roots of like, you know, it's not just like rainbows and like, you know, there's always, there's a dark side of everything. And you, you know, it's like, you're kind of this high can put it for season three. It's like, you know, when you're, when you're writing your diary and you don't want people to read your diary, mm -hmm. it's you're reading in our diaries and what really is going on and and it's like really beautiful to just even see especially in episode five when he gets shot mm -hmm. that shot was all one take oh yeah i think somebody mentioned that to me yeah it was all one take and 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 i think one thing i loved about elgin as well is that he wants to create this season where the fans and the audience are riding the the waves with t to like together like if you're there especially when that camera turned around for easy and gabby mm -hmm. he's like are you okay you know that scene mm -hmm. it, like just so he wants the fans to see everything what's happening you know right it was, it was so that cool. was really cool mm -hmm. i so i knew that the girl talk session was going to be so good and i just realized that i've held you here for 41 minutes oh my I'm god I, I, I forgot that the clock was there. So I'm sorry oh. if you had something to do. No, no, no. I was free. I was free for you for, for like two hours. I <laughs> well, everybody seems as enthralled with listening to your stories as I am. Uh, I'm, I'm, having, I'm just having so much fun with you. that Me I, too. Honestly, I forgot. It's about to be. It's about, I, I, can, I can stay. We got <laughs> You see, and you can tease all the guys who were here beforehand, and we've had great, awesome, super conversations, but I never lost track of <laughs> like this before, so. Oh, that's beautiful. That means we're just fully connected, and we don't even, like, yeah. knew the time. That's awesome. Rosie. I... So, uh, so thank you so much for your time. But if we can squeeze in one more question here, somebody wants to know what if you have any other projects that you're going to be working on. We just want to support you. And somebody earlier also said, I would see a spin off just about Gabby's life. Is that something you would be into? Hell yeah, I'm down. Um, you know, what's funny. You're not the only one that said that. Um, Kershawn, uh, one of our like the our people that work with and Mayans, he was saying, like, watch, they'll spin off on you. And I'm like, that'll be cool. But, yeah, I don't want to get my hopes up. That's a good idea, though. <laughs> um, but I will be in, in the Disney Jungle Cruise. So alongside with Dwayne Johnson and Emily Blunt, which Stop is it! in July. Yeah, I play Keela. So I play the love interest of Dwayne. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait. Of Dwayne Johnson? <laughs> yes. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Hold on, I love Easy Girl. Like, but can we talk about The Rock real right quick? Wait, oh now we're gonna be here another forty minutes. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, he's awesome. He he's a big teddy bear, and when I say big, he's so tall. So when oh I yeah, I met him. Hug, my head was like in his chest. I was like, hi. <laughs> he's awesome. He's you're tall. not gonna have any time for a Gabby spinoff. You're off making movies with The Rock. Not even. You know, I will. I will put some room to do a spinoff. Best believe. <laughs> FX. You heard it here first. We're ready for that Gabby spinoff. I'm just saying, like, if if the plan is here that you know their road split, I'm okay with that because I'm already in love with the character of Gabby, and I just I want to see more of her. Oh, and you will. You will. With the Rock. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Before FX kills me. Uh. Tune in to new episodes of Mayans MC Tuesday nights at 10 p.m. 24 hours later is the replay on FX on Hulu. And you can check out all my exclusive interviews with the cast of Mayans MC at EW.com. Next week, we have Emily Tosta. Woo! More girl talk. So make sure you, you save like an hour to talk to us. Oh, uh, Yeah. <laughs> parting words parting words uh, maybe something we can ask uh, uh emily Ooh, what's going to happen next between you and coco well we'll be talking to her after that happens so yeah that's definitely on the <laughs> list of questions 
You're a whole queen, Sulan. Thank you so much for this time with you. I know once you make your debut with The Rock, you won't have time for little old me, but... I will. I will put some space for you. What are you talking about? <laughs> but siempre, 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 you can count on me. Estás en tu casa. Gracias, Rosie. Thank you for just even taking the time to have an interview with me. Of I course. So much fun. Ya son 45 minutos, Rosie. But I had the best time. Me too. Felt like... Just like a normal conversation. You're awesome. You're Thank amazing. you. You too, you too. There's good energy here, and that's that's what we love. I love that. Mm, mucho amor. Mucho, como aguante mercado. Mucho, mucho oh. amor. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, un besito. Bye, beso. Mm -hmm. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.